I'm now going to recognize myself for an opening statement. I'm not going to begin by belaboring any points. The President's withdrawal was a complete and utter catastrophe. The images of people hanging off of planes and desperate parents handing their babies over the airport walls to soldiers are seared into our country's collective conscience. Yesterday, every member of this committee in this room, Republican and Democrat, voted to require the State Department to come up with a plan for reimbursing the numerous outside groups who had to get involved to rescue Americans from Afghanistan. I can guarantee that private citizens flying 7,000 miles across the world to rescue Americans and those that worked alongside America for 20 years was not a product of the State Department's good planning and order. That was a product of chaos and a failure to plan. And we have witnesses here today that will be able to give specific pictures of what was happening on the ground that will be clearer and more accurate than any news report that I've seen. And frankly, I believe that's because the White House and its mouthpieces were lying to the American people as they were narrating what was taking place during the withdrawal of Afghanistan. I have no doubt that your eyewitness testimonies will demonstrate a clear failure to predict or plan for the worst case scenarios as we do when we plan military operations. I'm grateful to each of you for appearing here today. Command Sergeant Major Jake Smith specifically is here in his personal capacity. He is an active duty service member, and so I would ask members of the committee to refrain from engaging him in political questions. The purpose of today's hearing is to examine the failure to plan and the major repercussions that it had on diplomatic efforts and national security. This administration said time and time again that Afghanistan was not a war that could be won militarily. That's the administration's words. It could only be won diplomatically. If this could only be won diplomatically, then there is no other conclusion than the withdrawal was a complete and total loss because that is when we lost all diplomatic options. The literal failure to plan was completely, er completely erased the potential for on-the-ground diplomacy and created a black eye for the United States standing abroad and, and national security at home. I'm going to say this. I wrote black eye in my comments when I wrote this. This isn't a black eye. It, it, black eye does not come close to constituting what took place, what it, what it is for America with the draw, withdrawal of Afghanistan. I don't, I don't know the appropriate word to say what exactly that is, but it's black eye is not the right one. In the words of the administration's spokesperson, Jennifer Saki, the mouthpiece, the president asked for a review from his national security team. He asked them not to sugarcoat it, and he was provided with a clear-eyed assessment about the best path forward. These are the words of Jennifer Saki. She said that the president was the ultimate decision maker. He was the decision maker who chose September 11th as the initial drawdown date. He was the decision maker who pulled the people with the guns out before the people without the guns. The decision maker who collapsed the operations at H to, to H. Kaya Airport. It was President Joe Biden, the ultimate decision maker. He decided to, to make the decisions, and none of those decisions in that process of the withdrawal, they weren't made in the Doha agreement. That's not when they were made. They were made by the ultimate decision maker, Joe Biden. Americans asked after the withdrawal, how could the intelligence have gotten it so wrong? But I find it to be clearer each and every day that the intelligence didn't get it as wrong as Americans thought. It was the ultimate decision maker that was refusing to listen to the intelligence being given. Again, in the words of the White House spokesperson, Jennifer Saki, the president believes there is not a military solution. This will require a diplomatic solution. She said that the president was clear from the beginning that we anticipated and planned to have a diplomatic presence on the ground moving forward. Why then did we see a repeat of Saigon with diplomatic personnel being evacuated off of the roof of an embassy, though that is exactly what President Biden said would never happen. It's because of a failure to plan for Murphy, a failure to plan for a situation when things don't go exactly perfect, exactly as you plan them. It's basic military. A failure to plan 
meant that the security of diplomatic personnel could not be guaranteed, and as a result, there's no diplomatic presence on the ground today. Again, in the words of the administration's spokesperson, Jennifer Psaki, the United States will retain significant assets in the region, as the president talked about, over-the-horizon capabilities to counter the potential reemergence of the terrorist threat. That's garbage. Any over-the-horizon capabilities that we had to deal with terrorist threats were wiped out almost immediately, and it has only gotten worse. From the onset of the withdrawal and the decision to abandon Bagram Airfield, our capabilities were diminished and our security deteriorated. The Abbey Gate bomber was a member of ISIS-K who had just been released from the Bagram prison. Now, in the two years since, Afghanistan has essentially become a club med for terrorists. ISIS is using it as a training ground, though fighting with the Taliban. The Taliban is sending wel welfare payments to al-Qaeda fighters. There are no over-the-horizon capabilities to deal with that. It's the opposite. Our adversaries are literally gaining a foothold there. Just three months ago, leaders from Iran, Russia, China, they met in Uzbekistan to discuss what they called, quote, regional solutions rather than Western interference in Afghanistan. Our witnesses here today will be able to speak to the situation on the ground and that the failure to plan wiped out any possibility of what the administration said had to be the victory that was diplomatic efforts. As a direct result of, in my opinion, a failure to plan, not bad luck, bad planning, America mourns 13 of its sons and daughters. We have families sitting in our audience who mourn the loss of their sons and daughters. I've had numerous conversations with the families. And what I've extracted from those conversations is there's nothing that can bring back anybody's children. My colleague, we've lost friends. You all have lost friends. There's nothing that can bring back anybody that we've lost. We look for solace in how we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. That's, to be frank, that's what I've heard from the families. How do we make sure that something like this never happens again. So we're trying to learn so that we don't repeat those past mistakes. But from where I see it, those that made the mistakes are still in the exact same positions today. Or they've advanced in the positions that they hold. And they are now trying to rewrite history in order to tout the withdrawal of Afghanistan as a success. And what that tells me is that as of right now, they haven't learned a thing. I'm now going to recognize my colleague, Ranking Member Crow, the gentleman from Colorado, for any opening statement that you may have. 